Gude. Over the past months, so December 2025, several important updates landed around Microsoft Vibe Voice, which makes this a good moment to take a look at the project as a whole. Vibe Voice is an open source text to speech framework from Microsoft Research. It is designed for expressive, long form, multi speaker conversational audio, <laughs> and it can generate current speech for up to 90 minutes in a single run with multiple speakers. By the way, this is a question I got asked a lot. Can I use this TTS for long audio generation? So this might be interesting for generating podcast style content directly from text. Let's go and check out Microsoft Vibe Voice. So let's kick it off uh, by taking a look to their GitHub repository. As always, the links uh, are in the description box. So as you can see, the project has been pretty active. So last uh, commit on two weeks uh, ago. On the right side, we can see that it is uh, based here as an MIT license. It has a code of conduct and we have around 20,000 stars on that repository. And it's mainly based on Python here. So <laughs> it's mainly based, no, it's exclusively based on Python code. And as you can see directly on the top, these are the updates from uh, December 2025. So let's take a closer look. We added more experimental speakers for exploration. You can see here some, some of the languages, German, French, Italian, Japanese, and many more. Uh, originally, please correct me if I'm wrong, they just supported English and Chinese, and now they added experimental new uh, languages here. And on this aspect, I'm really interested. So it supports streaming text input for, as they mentioned, up to 90 minutes of audio. This is pretty impressive. Obviously, Microsoft is aware of, <laughs> is aware of um, the model being misused. Work with that model in a responsive, no, responsible. <laughs> so work with this model in a responsible way, which should be the fact for every TTS model. So always use AI voices in a responsible way. And this responsibility is mentioned too at the end of the readme. Take a look here. We do not recommend using Vibe Voice in a commercial or real world application without uh, additional testing and development. The model is intended for research and development purposes only, even if it's MIT license. And please use responsible. The recent changes in December update seems to affect the GitHub stars ranking significant, as you can see here, uh, at the December timeline. Let's listen to these samples here on the README side. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vibe Voice podcast. I'm your host. Now, don't worry, listening to this won't make you age slower than everyone else, unless you're... Okay, this is the English version. Here's a Chinese version. Then go to be better man. 当然，除非您是在宇宙飞船里收听的。Sounding good, but as I don't speak Chinese, <laughs> I'm, I'm easily to be impressed. Spontaneous singing. Not sure if this is the mainly use case for an AI voice, but let's listen to the spontaneous singing. Hey, remember see you again? In a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. Wow that line <laughs> every time please let me know in the comments what you think on this uh, spontaneous singing uh, example and here we have this uh, long conversational with four people example so this is a uh, duration of 42 minutes not 90 but uh, nevertheless uh, impressive let's listen to this hello and welcome to planet in peril in the last 10 years it's every region of the world. We hear about vulnerable people being at risk during heat waves, which makes sense. Where is that money supposed to come from, especially for countries that are already struggling? Sounding like a really good natural uh, uh, voice quality. In the end of the readme, in this limitation field or section, they mention that they do not support overlapping audio at the moment. So one speaker finishing, then the next speaker and so on. So no parallel talking with multiple voices. Next, let's take a closer look to their uh, GitHub page. Uh, link in the description with some links to the code base and to Hugging Face more additional information. 
But what I really think is impressive is this example, spontaneous emotions. So let's listen and you can see here already we have a conversation between two AI voices um, talking about working overtime. <laughs> I can't believe you did it again. I waited for two hours. Two hours! Not a single call, not a text. Do you have any idea how embarrassing that was, just sitting there alone? Look, I know, I'm sorry, all right? Work was a complete nightmare. My boss dropped a critical deadline on me at the last minute. I didn't even have a second to breathe, let alone check my phone. A nightmare? That's the same excuse. Okay, this is pretty impressive. I'm not sure um, if or how this works. So there are no tags or SSML, no markup languages, tags, whatever inside this. So I'm not sure if this works with large language models or with context recognition. So I'm not sure how this works, but I really like the way it is. As you can see here on this page, a link in the description are lots of audio samples that might be interesting for you to uh, listen to. So let's just randomly pick the podcast with background music. And today we are diving into one of the most anticipated and frankly, most chaotic tech launches of the year. Next, let's take a look to the Huggy Face space. And again, you already guess it, link in the description. <laughs> this page provides lots of information, but what might be interesting is here this field also, the model is primarily built for English. We found still a certain level of multilingual capacity or capabilities. So I'm really excited if other languages than English and Chinese, which it has been uh, trained primarily for, uh, how the quality works in these other experimental languages. It has been trained using a large language model, in this case QN 2.5. Please let me know in the comments if you know more. Is this LLM responsible so that this emotional pronunciation work? And at the end of the Hugging Face page here, we have some responsibility information. So as you can see, the Vibe Voice model is limited to research purposes. And here's a long list of out of scope use cases. So do not forget to give these limitations an additional closer look. After scrolling through all these GitHub and Hugging Face readmes, now it's time to do some practical stuff. So um, the project provides this Google Colab notebook using a T4 GPU. So obviously it requires or uses at least uh, graphic power. Um, I did some research and found this issue here, link in the description. If you have just CPU available for inference, so for synthesis, um, here's that hint, we added CPU support, so it should work without any NVIDIA CUDA enabled graphic device. As you can see on the right side, we have this uh, connection right now with that green arrow here. Arrow? Not, no failure. <laughs> So let's uh, take a look to the running runtime. So here's T4 GPU. So this should be satisfied. And let's hit the first. This will clone the repository, do some uh, dependency installations, and will download the model from the Hugging Face Hub. So you can see T4 GPU detected, cloned, dependencies installed, and now downloading the model. This seems to work. So you can see this green hint here and we have a new directory structure here with the repository cloned and the downloaded model. I guess we can skip the optional part because model download has worked. Oh yes, please, we like more experimental voices. Let's download these. Okay, we can see experimental voices as a tar zip file. Download complete. Step two, launch. Vibe Voice real-time demo. Let's hit play. Even if the process is still running by that running circle here, it seems to open a server process on localhost, which is not really helpful using a Google Colab notebook, but luckily they provide an external URL, which is printed uh, in the command line here. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can see a public URL. Uh, and now let's click that Link. It's always a good idea to click weird sounding unknown links in the internet. I 
think so. <laughs> we have a list of speakers. This seems to be DE, so the language code for German, English, and French, and so on. So, hmm. as my mother tongue is selected by default, let's take a German phrase. Enter the simple text phrase, stick with the default, and hit start. Guten Morgen. Dieser Satz dient als Referenz, um mehrere TTS oder TTS Modelle zu vergleichen. Ich bin gespannt auf das Ergebnis. It's a little bit weird, uh, but it's good to understand. Let's choose a female uh, voice. Guten Morgen. Dieser Satz dient als Referenz, um mehrere TTS oder TTS Modelle zu vergleichen. Ich bin gespannt auf das Ergebnis. Still a little bit weird, but not too bad. Let me know in the comments if you understand German, what you think. Let's go with an English voice. Good morning. This phrase is the reference to compare several available and free TTS or TTS models. I am curious on the result. Sounding good. Now let's do a little test. Let's just copy the pure text from this spontaneous emotion example and feed it into the model. I'm really curious if this works the same way or is there any special effect or special configuration uh, required to do this spontaneous emotion. I can't believe you did it again. I waited for two hours. Two hours! It seems to be reproducible. Uh, let's change it to three hours. I can't believe you did it again. I waited for multiple hours. Three hours! Okay, so maybe it's the exclamation mark. So let's test that. Love you, honey. I can't believe you did it again. I waited for multiple hours. Love you, honey. Not a single call, not a text. Okay, so that love you, honey, with the exclamation mark at the end, seems to be pretty nice pronounced. So it's not that exclamation mark means yell at me. <laughs> so let's go back to the original text and use another English voice. I can't believe you did it again. I waited for two hours. Two hours. Not a single call, not a text. Seems a little bit like British English. Yeah, from what I've heard so far, pretty cool. Let me know in the comments if I should do a voice audio sample comparison with all the other supported languages here. Let's test if we can install this locally on our local system. I'm using my Ubuntu uh, system for this testing. So let's see uh, the version, so Ubuntu 24.04 with an NVIDIA 10 70 Ti, so just a 4 gigabyte uh, GPU um, graphic card. Let's start creating a Python virtual environment. Let's activate it, upgrade some default packages, and now let's see the documentation on GitHub link in the. Huh? By the way, if you are on the way to the description, do not forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, share my channel with other voice technology. <laughs> with other open source voice technology enthusiasts. And uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel, obviously, if you have not done so already. They recommend using uh, NVIDIA Deep Learning Container with the CUDA framework. We will skip this. It is always a good idea to skip the first steps of the documentation. So let's clone the repository from code. GitHub repository is cloned. Let's move into the directory. And before we install uh, the, uh, well, we build the dependencies for the Vibe Voice project running pip install minus e, let's first at all, let's take a close uh, first look to the pip list. So these packages are installed by now. Let's now install the project dependencies. Building and installing the project dependencies is finished. Let's take a look to the pip list again. And we can see we have lots of more installed packages and dependencies, including Vibe Voice in version 001. Early bird, I'd say. Let's take a look to the usage section in the readme. Just run the Python command inside this demo folder with a Vibe Voice real-time demo Python. So let's see if we got a demo folder here. Yes, and let's see. Downloading the model as it's been done in the Google Colab notebook, obviously, too. 
after all the downloading process, uh, the server process is up and running on port 3000. So if you now open your browser, go to either localhost or to the IP address of the system you are running the process, the server process with port 3000, you have the identical overview um, as we've seen on the Google Colab. Let's do a quick test with an English uh, phrase. So that's live. Um, while trying to synthesize audio on my local system, I've run into an exception here, CUDA error, uh, no kernel image is available. So after doing a quick research, this could be a problem with the CUDA version 12 or 11 and my relatively old GPU. So this might be some mismatch of the version of CUDA and the age of my graphic card. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments, please. I've searched the Microsoft Vibe Voice repository on GitHub for this issue, so no kernel image is available. Uh, there's no open, no closed issue with that error message, so probably I'm the only one with such an old graphic card. <laughs> so, <laughs> not sure, maybe I'll give it a closer look afterwards, but uh, at least the installation works and I hope it will work with newer graphic cards. What I really would like to test and play around with is that multi-speaker by text input. Um, but if I take a look to the documentation here, uh, you can use inference uh, directly uh, from the command line, obviously, so run uh, the real-time inference script with a text file. So this is the text input uh, in the demo folder, text examples, uh, the, by voice text. But here is an explicit speaker name called in the command line. But I guess, I hope, I think, uh, it should be possible to specify multiple speakers for that probably podcast use case to specify multiple speakers inside of this one text file. So let's take a short look to this uh, file here. For that, let's go to the code base, demo folder, text examples, and we have the text file. Let's take a look to the raw version. Let's scale it a little bit up. So it's better for you to see, but correct me if I oversee something obvious, but here is no tag of which speaker or how I can call multiple speakers inside of one text input file. Let's see the other text file. So no speaker tags uh, for changing between yeah, multiple speakers or languages. Um, so, but nevertheless, so the quality of the demo and the single speaker version on the Google Colab notebook is pretty impressive. So it's a great text-to-speech repository uh, from my personal thought, but please let me know what you think. I will keep an eye on Vibe Voice by Microsoft. Maybe I'll figure out how to run it locally with a newer GPU or maybe CPU based. But um, yeah, if you like that content or this video in special, give it a thumbs up. This really helps me a lot. Subscribe to my channel, share my channel with other voice technology, open source technology enthusiasts. And what else can I say apart from Thank you for watching my video and have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>